Theo the Juggernaut with you guys on a beautiful Monday afternoon. A little chilly outside, but hey, it's Easter week. We're going to see how it goes. If you were watching the Masters, congratulations, Sergio. If you were sticking around the MTS Center, well, what can we say about the Winnipeg Jets? They gave their fans a chilling victory yet again, seven in a row, and in a way that you wouldn't really expect it. I mean, let's think about it. You go one man down with a minute 20 left. Your boy, Joel Amia sitting in the box for a two-minute penalty that he probably didn't deserve. And Paul Maurice throws out uh, Shuffles and Wheeler. And the two of them combine to get the game-winning shorthanded goal against Pecorine. Absolutely amazing. I mean, I didn't expect it at all. I thought we were going straight in at overtime. Play a little four-on-three action. Take away the uh, power play. And then go with the last four minutes, three-on-three uh, three or four-on-four four for that matter. But the Jets decided, you know what, we're going to win this one in regulation. Blake Wheeler and my boy Kyle Connor scored his second goal, first game back in quite a while. Must feel really good for him. A great pass from Adam Lowry. Sent all alone against Rene. And they both beat Rene on the same side upstairs uh, where the mama hides the cookies. So great to see the Jets seven in a row. Unfortunate that the season's ended. We know that a long time ago. Playoffs are set. They start Wednesday. But what can we say? Quickly, number one. The Winnipeg Jets, seven games in a row. Never have they done that since they've been back in Winnipeg. What does that mean? I mean, Paul Maurice doesn't put a lot of weight on this win, but what I'm going to say is this. You've taken some players that were in injury. I mean, three defensemen. Postma, Myers, Enstrom. And we can say Sherrod as well. So four of your top six defensemen are out. And you bring in some of the guys from the Moose, excluding Kyle Kuzman, which is why I kind of think he should be, he should have been given a shot. Nonetheless, they win seven games in a row without those seven defensemen. Big question mark is, why are we going to sign them? Who are we going to sign? And who are we going to give an opportunity from the Moose to jump up? I mean, Melchiori played well. Nogier did well. I mean, we've got Tucker Pullman in the mix. He just signed a one-year deal. Who knows what's going to happen? There's a lot of big question marks on the defensive side. And nonetheless, the Moose themselves have a lot of question marks on the defensive side too. So how do you look at what's going to happen for the Moose and the Jets? Big question mark for Chevy and the boys up in the office. No loss for offense at all. When you look around the league, the Winnipeg Jets had three players, almost four players with 60 points or more, including Dustin Bufflin, Nick Ehlers, uh, Patrick Laine, Shuffles, and Blake Wheeler. Brian Little was close too, but he was out for a good 20 games as well. But you think of the offense prowess that the Winnipeg Jets have, there is no loss there at all. The defensive side, and, except, and especially a number one goaltender, goaltender, has to be the priority for the Winnipeg Jets organization. And I have to say this about True North. I mean, Chipman and Thompson, you guys have been not going to the well, so to speak, and putting up the bucks. And Paul Weiser had one thing that was very clear last week. This is the year, or this is the part of the year, the offseason and into next season, where you've got to start paying your players. And you've got to really think about, okay, we have to do something that's going to make a push, not to a wild card one or two spot, but for those top three spots in the division. And here's why. Yeah, a lot of contracts are expiring. A lot of these youngsters, these rookies, are going to be one of those, are going to be those players that are going to want the extra money. And are we going to be a team like the Blackhawks that's going to sign them and keep them and build a nucleus? Or are we going to be a team like the baseball Florida Marlins that are saying, you know what, we're just going to get rid of all our players because we can't afford them. We're going to be that number 29, number 30 team in the NHL all the time or that doesn't make the playoffs, and we're going to be those guys that are going to groom these players two or three years in the NHL and then let somebody else, some other team, let them have them in their prime. Let's be that team in the prime. Let's be that team that says, you know what, we're a force to be reckoned with. We already do that offensively. Now we've got to do it defensively. If that means we've got to trade a couple of chippers to get some defense, the question is, where do we get it from? If you're going to build from the back, if you're going to build on the fact that you've got to learn on the game, Learning in progress, building with game day, just like you did the beginning of this year, you're going to have that same issue with your defense next year. I mean, Josh Morris, he played all 82 games this year and did a fantastic job and was well rewarded for a great tournament, a great uh, trophy at the end of the night last night on Saturday. As well, Patrick Laine and Brian Little. Bottom line is these guys are young, they're talented, keep them here, build your nucleus just like you did Chevy in Chicago and start putting your money where your mouth is, Thompson and Chipman. As for that, at the game Saturday, fan appreciation night. Love the fact that they gave away so many great things. Too bad I was sitting in the 300 levels where they gave away one set of pennants and a $25 gift card. Wow. 
That's where the fans are stand- sitting. That's where the fans start the wave. That's where the fans did the cheering and the booing and the hurrahing. It wasn't the guys in the 100s and their cell phones and all that jazz not paying attention to pucks going into the stands. It was the 300s. And you want to treat, appreciate the fans? Appreciate the ones that are putting money in the, your bank that can barely put money on the food for their kids and their table. There's a lot of people in the 300s that love our Jets as opposed to the 100s that schmooze and booze with their corporate coo- coonies. The bottom line is take care of your 300 guys next year if you're going to do a fan appreciation night. I've never seen my boy BJ doing a, any type of thing in the 300s. I don't know if that's because he's not told to or if he's still just stay in the 100s and take care of the boys. Bottom line is it's not worth it for me to go live in the 100s because quite frankly, they're not fans. Some of them are, some of them aren't, but they're more coaches than anything. There are 10,000 coaches in the 100s and there's 8,000 fans up in the 300s and the 200s. So get your stuff together there, True North. Help us out. Let us have some fun too. Because I tell you, that Saturday game was amazing up in the 300s and you missed it all because you were too busy taking care of the 100s. No giving offense to the guys that want to spend the money to go to the game. I get that. But your fans live upstairs and that's what it belongs to. As for that, hope we have a good off-season Winnipeg Jets. Go home, get well rested, line A, hopefully get your stamina up, tell me that you're tired and all that. I get that, but you know what? You're 18 years old. You should be having enough energy in the jacket and then some. Ehlers was flying around the net all year, 82 games too. Nonetheless, I'm not going to compare anybody else. Winnipeg Jets, you gave us some excitement for the last seven games. You gave up some question marks we've got to figure out. There are definitely some holes in our system that we have to plug up. We'll see what happens come May and June, and hopefully Chevy can put some draft stuff together. Get some good signings on the back end. And we have a great team come the fall. As for that, we'll leave the Jets alone. We'll leave the Moose alone. We Kings are out as well. We got the Gold Eyes showing up here in less than a month. Preseason and spring training starts May 1st. It's going to be an exciting ballpark, that's for sure. Those are defending champions. See if they can keep this championship in Winnipeg for another year. This is Theo the Juggernaut saying good morning. Have a great day. Have a great week. We'll talk to you later in the week.